We are three days out until Wimbayama is officially a spur, and we have a nice visit from NBA 2K League's Hawks Talons Gaming. Yes, the number one pick in the NBA 2K League draft. He is on Locked On Spurs. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked on Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked on Spurs right here on the Locked on NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. I am glad to have you back. It's almost here, everybody. The wait is almost over. We're three days out until Wemby is officially a San Antonio Spur. I cannot wait. But obviously, we're going to be talking about Wemby, the Spurs. Well, I figure since we're three days out of the draft, let's talk about the three best things or some of the three good things that we're looking forward to from the Spurs, Wemby moving forward once that night is all but over. And then later on in the show, we'll have uh, MDS of Hawks Talents Gaming. That is the NBA 2K League team affiliate to the Atlanta Hawks. He's going to be coming on the show talking about what they have cooking for the community as well as some advice he has for Wimbayama. And with him being a number one pick in the NBA 2K League, what advice would he give Wimby as being a number one pick in the NBA? And again, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts, part of the Lockdown NBA or Podcast Network, your team every day. Before I begin, yes, I know I've been inconsistent with videos. I get it. But if you can't tell, I am sick. And you do not want me on video right now. Let's put it that way. I got tissue jammed up my nose right now. So apologies for the inconsistency. It just, uh, yeah, just a bad string of bad luck. Last week, me and the guest Vinny, we just couldn't get a uh, time schedule for a video recording. So yeah, just when I was getting used to it. But we'll be back soon with more video shows later on this week. So as mentioned, uh, the NBA draft is right around the corner. Wemby is going to be putting on that Spurs draft cap. And there's a lot of excitement, a lot of excitement regarding uh, his arrival to the NBA. And, you know, a lot of fans are excited, obviously. And we're going to be talking about some of the three best things we're looking forward to. But I think one of the things I would like to caution everybody before we get to that is, remember, he's just a teenager. Let's not forget that. He's just a teenager. He's not ready-made. He's not coming into a situation where Tim Duncan did coming in to a roster with Robinson and Sean Elliott and Avery Johnson. And, you know, you know, the list goes on and on. That was quite the ready-made team. He's going to be part of a rebuild. Now he's going to be a big key in the rebuild. He's going to shorten that rebuild tremendously, but this team when Bayama, that it's still going to be a work in progress and as great, as great as it is and exciting as it is, and that this coming weekend when he is reduced to San Antonio, it's going to be phenomenal. Again, just keep that in the back of your mind. This is still a rebuild, and the Spurs got to get through it. But <laughs> Wimby certainly helps uh, shorten that tremendously. And uh, to talk about some of the three things that he's excited about, uh, whether it be from Wimby or the Spurs, is uh, our guest today. He is Casey Vieira with Ken's 5 San Antonio, my colleague. He's on the TV side of things. Wouldn't you know it, Casey? I started getting into this video thing, and I get sick. Typical. Uh-huh. Right, that's always part happens of the that way. Always that's happens that way. Course. That's how it, that's how it works. Yeah. By the way, stick around, everybody. Casey's going to be telling you what you can look forward to on the TV side of things on uh, Ken's Five in just a few minutes. So, Casey, the, the the wait is almost done. Just three more days. Wimby will be a spur. A lot of excitement, but when you reflect on what's about to happen about to-, to San Antonio Spurs, the city of San Antonio. It's got to get you jazzed up. It's got to get you excited. What are what are about three things? Since we're three days out, let's play with that. That you're looking forward to from the Spurs, Wimby, or the city. You know, just just in general, what are you ex- what are you excited about in the uh, the future for the Spurs? I think the first thing probably for me is how it impacts the people of of this town, this city, the community. Uh, I think you get a real a real sense of what the San Antonio Spurs mean to this community, mean to this city when things are really going the right direction. And admitted, admittedly, I hadn't 
been on the boat when when the Spurs were last time they were relevant relevant I hadn't been on the beat yet I hadn't been in San Antonio yet so it was only when I was on the outside looking in but this is for me the first taste of what it looks like when the Spurs really for lack of a better term matter because the fat past few years if we're being honest the Spurs didn't really matter and, and now they do and you're seeing it on so many fronts of What makes San Antonio Spurs basketball so special in San Antonio? You go all across town, you know, you see, you see the little things on the South side, you see the little stuff that people are selling inside the mom and pop shops that are just representing Wemby. You're seeing a lot, a lot of, a lot of more, a lot more people talking about their, I don't want to say reinvestment because it has a, a kind of a little bit of a negative sense the sense that there was not an investment in it but for the sake of this conversation a little bit of a reinvestment in the in the spurs and what they saw and you know being around since the 1970s and watching Iceman and, and things like that and paralleling it to back then and paralleling this to when duncan got here and paralleling it to the championship and kind of hearing those stories from a little bit from you know from the people who have experienced this sure. before you know what i mean the, the, the people who have been around, who, who've been able to tell stories uh, like this and, and to hear them say things like, you know, we, you know, we haven't seen this in certainly almost 10 years because of, because of the last championship. But even beyond that, when, when you got Duncan, I had someone tell me the other day, it's, it was like, okay, this was like we got when we got Duncan, but amplified times a hundred yeah. because of, of the international factor, because of, the factor that we are in the age of social media and that kind of thing that way into it. And mainly because this, this kid who's coming here is just different. It's just that I know everyone's calling him an alien, but in a, in a figurative sense as well, it's just so foreign as to what he is, as to what he provides in so many fronts um, beyond basketball. And I think for me, seeing how much, how much it has impacted the community, the city of San Antonio. I know this is something you can vouch for as well, is what is what has made this really special so far. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And I remember when Duncan came and there was a big party in um, Alamo Plaza area. And I remember going to that. <clears throat> and it was massive. And whatever the Spurs had planned for this weekend – you know, I bet you it's probably be times 10. Probably won't be outside because how freaking hot it is. You know, oh, but, I hope not. Yeah. If it is, but, I'm not going. If it is, I'm yeah, not yeah. Going. I don't think anybody, I think you're <laughs> just watching from afar. But yeah. I think, I think it'll be magnified. Uh, we we have people, yeah, we have our people who will go. I'll, 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 actually, yeah. I don't think practically I can go. I think I have to be in the studio anyway. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. Even if I couldn't, I, I ain't going. I ain't going. Yeah. I'll but, watch but, but, but one of the things that I'm looking forward to, one of, one of my three things that I'm, you know, so three days out is how the Spurs are going to handle it. Mm-hmm. I don't... They Safe to say they had it easy with Timmy. They had it easy mm-hmm. with him. You know, I don't want to do, you know, movies. I don't want to do shoe deals and promote this and promote that. Social media wasn't a thing during the Tim Duncan era, the Tony Mono area. Uh, or, or, you know, Tony maybe started, you know, dabbling in it, but... Not too much. Manu for sure was starting to get into it, but never did we see the Spurs handle what could potentially be a megastar in their own backyard. Tim Duncan right. was a was was a star, absolute, you know, Hall of Famer. But then there's Wimbayama, who could p- mm-hmm. possibly surpass him on just the spotlight itself. Like there was a big spotlight on Tim Duncan. Now there's like the entire sun on Wimbayama. And I want to see, and that's what I'm excited about. See how the Spurs handle this new generation of megastars. You know, the closest I think they got to that was David Robinson. Because right. you know, these kids forget Robinson was in movies. He was in TV shows. He was in music videos. He was in big time Nike commercials. Mr. Robinson's neighborhood had his own sneaker line. But Wimby could surpass all three of these guys, you, you know, uh, you know, the, oh, I'm sorry, four, I guess, Timmy, Tony, Manu, and David. So 
that's what I'm excited about to see how the Spurs are going to handle this new generation of megastars. What about you? Well, just kind of piggybacking beyond that, I was having a conversation with somebody very similar, uh, you know, a lifelong San Antonio resident, very similar to a lot of the things you just said uh, was about this is the first time they, they've had that. For the kids, the basketball fans across the country, this went when, when Duncan was in his prime and Parker and Ginobili, and when the Spurs were the outside looking in, notoriously known as just being boring, that jersey wasn't selling. You weren't going, you weren't going on the street of Chicago and seeing a, a Tim Duncan jersey. That wasn't happening. Wembenyama is different. Wembenyama is flashy. Wembenyama is something that's going to theoretically put these jerseys on the street everywhere. Oh, yeah. you know, 20, yeah. 20 years ago, you weren't seeing a Duncan jersey uh, nope. in, in a random city, but you were seeing Vince Carter. You were seeing Tracy McGrady. You were seeing Allen Iverson, guys whose resume are nowhere near Tim Duncan's, you know, fringe to Hall of Famers already, but they were not anywhere near the a player Duncan was in terms of accomplishment. Why? Because collectively on the outside looking in, Duncan was boring. Duncan yeah. was boring. He was. But this is the first time that the Spurs have had that guy that has just that that nationwide, worldwide impact to sell, to be sold, to be branded, you know, to be the box office draw. Madison Square Garden, the where things are going, you know, it, it turns in you you you're in New York, you see it, you know, a big name comes to MSG, sure. that place is buzzing. That place is oh, yeah. buzzing. It's always that way. And that's what but Stephen what Stephen A. Smith say, box office, right? He says this this guy's yeah, yeah. whoever and, box and, and, office. Right, right. And and that's what Wemby's gonna do. He's gonna sell arenas home and away. Doesn't matter. Mm home -hmm. or away, they're, they're probably gonna get sold out because they wanna see who this kid is all about. And that means ticket demand, that's gonna mean press, that's gonna mean traveling press. That I mean it's just gonna be crazy. And that's what I'm I'm really excited about to see how this franchise can handle that. It's not just the PR people, it's gonna be the ticket people, it's gonna be marketing, it's gonna be you know, local sales, it's going to be international stuff. So hey, get ready, San Antonio Spurs organization, because Wimby is coming. Hey, we're not done talking about this topic. When we get back, we're going to round out some of the, the some more three things that we're looking forward to with Wimby's imminent arrival. And then Casey's going to tell you about what you can look forward to on Ken's 5 TV this week as the Spurs get ready to turn in that pick. They should just turn it in now, Casey. Just why are we even yeah, waiting? Right. Just have right. Adam Silver post it on NBA.com. Go look, the Spurs are returning their pick. We're done. So yeah. see it starting at number two on Thursday. But yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Make sure to follow Casey on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. You're definitely going to want to because he's going to tell you all about what you need to know or what Ken's 5 TV is doing this Thursday and I guess for the rest of the weekend. Hey, I want to talk to you about BetterHelp. This show episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Look, we get it. Dealing with life can be an issue, and yeah, it can be a chore sometimes. But it, you know, you get so easy to get caught up in what everyone needs from you, and you never take time to think about what you need from yourself. So we spend all our time giving. It can make us feel a little stretched thin a bit and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life, so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. If you benefit from therapy, well, you're definitely gonna love. Better help. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give Better Help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and then switch therapists for any time you need to for no additional charge. Find more balance with Better Help. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp H E L P dot com slash locked on MBA. Hello there. We're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Casey Vieira. Follow him on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. Hey, Locked On's NBA mock draft special is here. It's bigger than ever. Follow along the entire first round in a six-minute episode ultimate mock draft experience only Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available now on Locked On NBA Big Board on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. And we're talking about some of the things, three things that we're looking forward to 
with Wemby's arrival just around the corner. We're three days out, so we're trying to pick three things that we're looking forward to. So my second, Casey, is Mm -hmm. going to be how other teammates react to his arrival. You know, help me. You, you see the spotlight heaped on KJ for years. You see now the, the spotlight heaped on Sohan last year because he's the, the hair and, you know, getting to scraps on the court. That that spotlight is going to be shifted away from them. They're no longer going to be the it guys. It's going to be Wimby. I want to see how they adjust to knowing that perhaps they're not going to be the center focus of this team moving forward. Your thoughts? That is a very interesting thought process um, because there is a strong element of that. And I think, I think the good part, the luxury that the Spurs have had to, in that, in that context that, that could create friction a bit with it is that none of the other guys have largely been around long enough to truly take that full identity and run with it. Right. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. Sohan's only and KJ got, KJ got close. KJ got close. Yeah. 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 I mean, Sohan's only, of course, been around a year. Collins hasn't been in San Antonio very long. And I think that's kind of luxury in that context is kind of a weird word to use. But I mean, something that probably I don't see becoming, I don't want to say problem, but a thing, so to speak. I guess that's the way we can refer to it as a thing as opposed to a real real, I guess, impedance on the Spurs culture from what they have, because right now I feel like on the outside looking in, I feel like there's got to be a collective understanding based off last year of what last year was. I don't want to say almost kind of a placeholder of the season, but a placeholder of the season that sets the stage for potentially bracing for this, what could happen, and the hypothetical of what could happen did happen. So I don't think it'll be particularly foreign to a lot of them, but it's certainly enough to prompt the conversation that we're having. That's for sure. Yeah. And I want to see how they adjust to that because, you know, you, there were some fans saying like, Oh, you, I mean, obviously it was a different time last season before they won the draft, but Oh, you build around Sohan, you build around, you, you, you make him the center point. Now that's no longer anymore. Now he's just a complimentary guy to Wimby. Mm-hmm. So to see how young they are and we'll, we'll definitely see their maturity levels, you know, there may be a night where Kelton doesn't get his number called a lot because Wemby's just on fire. You know, look, mm-hmm. the Spurs went through it many years, four down, four down, Tim Duncan, let's give the ball to Timmy, let him do his thing. That's probably coming back in a different form with Wemby. It's going to be wherever down because he's mo- so multiple, you know, multi-positional player, but just to see the young guys, you know, evolve, evolution into now they're going to have to take a seat, uh, a back seat to it. Wimby, obviously, they're going to probably be still in that forefront to start the season until Wimby gets gets it going. But there's going to be a point where it's just this team is going to be his. And what does that say for Devin? What if Devin feels like he belongs in a different squad because he feels he could he's not just a complimentary role player or KJ. I'm not a complimentary role player. You know, what if that starts creeping in their heads? You know, K- KG's an, an Olympian, Team USA. So, mm-hmm. hand, you know, uh, rising stars. Uh, well, you will definitely see how that meshes moving forward. Uh, what about you? You got anything else that you're looking forward to? Or, at least, you know, you counting down to see, excited to see from the Spurs, Wimby joining? I think for me is that I feel, and this chatter is really starting to pick up over the past week or so, is that I don't think the Spurs will be done after the number one pick. I mean, I know I know they won't be done because they have the second round pick. Right. I think I think the Spurs won't be done, and I think there's going to be a subsequent notable move for them. This is me hypothesizing and trying to read the tea leaves of what everything is looking like and what everyone is reporting along that stuff. And I'm certainly not reporting this is entirely speculative on my end, but I feel like where there's smoke, there's fire. And we've been saying it forever that they have the asset to make a move that they essentially need to make a move because they can not hold on to all their first round picks. And the opportunity is there to put themselves to have that luxury to put a young, talented player on a, a similar timeline 
to Wemby's growth. And I, I'm really looking forward to see if they pull a trigger on that because the window of opportunity seems to be there and whether or not they elect to do it, of course, is in their hands. But that anticipation of that potentially happening, of them moving into the lottery again, yeah. um, uh, I, I think it's a real thing. I'm right there with you. I, I, I think you, you're going to hear a lot of so-and-so's reporting and this outlet is reporting this and that, that the Spurs are you know interested in buying back into the first round. That's probably right. gonna it's probably gonna start happening while you're listening to this episode, likely. But you've seen Vegas noting it, you know, with free agents. One of the move is actually buying into the draft, but the Spurs are, you know, talking with such and such free agent or you know, those type of rumors. Uh right. so 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 yeah, I I don't I don't think they're they're done building, which lends back to what I was talking about is the other guys, you know, KJ. He, he's an enticing piece to trade. I mean, he's probably mm-hmm. your best trade chip right now. Uh, with that, with that contract and his age and young, and he's already has a few accolades under his belt. You know, he's well liked in the league. You know, played with some of these guys with Team USA not too long ago. So we'll we'll definitely see. You know, one of the things that I'm looking forward to is this: is in a kind of as an offshoot of bringing in a megastar. Right. How are the Spurs going to handle down the road with these megastars chasing rings? It, you know, KD forces his way out. He goes to Golden State, wins the title. Uh, you know, you're starting to see that type of trend where I need a title to validate me. What if at the end of his rookie contract, he's not even close to even sniffing second round, final, West Finals? And he says, you know, I don't know if I can stick around with this. You know, I got to go get mine. You know, will Wimby, Wimby be that? Mean. Yeah, we, no. will Wimby be, uh, you know, the typical international player like a Joker or a Giannis that sticks around? We don't know. He has a brand. Yeah. He has to build that brand. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Of course, that's a conversation seven to eight years too early after that second contract. But and we don't know what. NBA in 2030 is going to be particularly looking like, but let's be real more superstars. And, and I don't think it's a matter of international national comparatively speaking. It's not, it's not what, what Tim Duncan, what, when he was 25 years old or however old he was when he was up for that second contract, it's a different circumstance. Players move now. Players move. Not to be a Debbie Downer here, but if you kind of look at the at the numbers, there's a better chance he leaves if you're looking at the superstar trajectory than he does stays for the duration of his career. That's certainly not suggesting he will. This is me just throwing out the sure. unofficial mathematics of what we've seen of superstars in the NBA over the past 10 years or so, if you will. The law of averages would suggest at some point he's going to leave. And, yeah. you know, well, well, that's a conversation that perhaps perhaps uh, eight years too early. I mean, that's a very realistic possibility. And then let's be real. We live in a world where that's going to get prompted as the free agency draws yeah. a little bit near. We're going to get our, like we saw with Giannis to Miami. It's like Giannis would consider Miami if you hit free agency. Wemby would consider New York. Oh, yeah, we're going to get hit yeah. our requisite. Wemby wants to play in New York or L.A thing in a few years yeah you know, get, yeah buckle up it's coming yeah hey i mean look you know a laker kind of thing would make sense you know shaq anthony davis dwight howard all those type of bigs end up in la you know that probably come down the road look they always get the the, the latest and greatest big in the nba somehow some way kareem abdul jabbar for crying out loud you know left milwaukee to the lakers so We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, there's so many things to look forward to, whether good or bad, or you know, makes you have a uh, pause a bit as the inevitable Wimby San Antonio Spurs era begins in just a few short days. The good thing is, Ken's Five TV and Casey, they have your back. Casey, what's cooking? Man, a lot. <laughs> we, uh, can can we, we tell talking? everybody who's your guest still, or no? That's still in the wraps. Uh, I, Under by the time this is released, 
I think we'll know. But for the okay. sake of for the sake of not having that full one hundred percent confirmation as opposed to the ninety five we'll call it now that we're gonna have, I don't wanna speak out of turn. Because I don't okay, want management to call me fair up enough. and be like, yeah, I heard you went on lockdown with plugging a product we don't have <laughs> for the sake of protecting my own my own butt over here. But uh, we're scheduled to have a former Spurs champion in studio with us tentatively, asterisk next to it, you know, card subject to change. That's what they always say. And I guess with the boxing world, uh, that's that's the plan. And Thursday, six o'clock draft night. We're gonna be there. We're gonna be in Brooklyn. We're gonna be at the AT and T Center. We're gonna be at the Spurs practice facility. We're gonna be at your at your Tia's uh, <laughs> spot down the road or where. Right. We're we're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, you know we're we. I think we were we've been in the planning stages. I think we have five people. We're gonna be out in the field. So, wow. And and this is very. This is very foreign in in the news world to get a a program that's outside of the usual sports bro- sports block, so to speak. We're getting an entire newscast for us. That type that type of sentiment is tremendously foreign. It does it doesn't happen. So management management thought we're like, yeah, hey, Wemby's the deal, man. We're going all out. They got the green light. And then us sports fellas in there, we're like, oh, we are not going to say no to this opportunity. We're just going to yep. take the ball and roll with it. And on a bigger scale, too, because you're going to be there. Our colleague Tom Petrini, you guys are going to be there on the digital side. I'm sure you're going to have one of your, like like we did last time or every time we see yep. each other in New York. We, re- we record one of our 1230 midnight locked on <laughs> after in, in the Let's put it this way. I already told my – I, I told – I, I told I told my job already, Ken's or just everybody else. Like, so I'm taking a half day off on Friday because by the time right. you finish up in Barclays, it's like pushing two a.m. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's a late night. <laughs> it's a late night. But yeah, but, but, it, but yes, so 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 it's yeah. So what time does the festivity start? Uh, do we know that now? When when should everybody tune in? Is it going to be on Facebook? Or, you know, what about all those other little oh, yeah. ways to catch I mean, stuff? We'll be we'll be checking in throughout the day on our four, five, and I believe noon newscast uh, from Brooklyn. But the big one, the big one you're going to want to check out is certainly at six o'clock. Because six o'clock, we're getting the whole thirty minutes all across town. On Thursday at ten o'clock, we'll be back theoretically, depending on how uh, how how things are looking over there, barring anything crazy happening. That's the plan. Ten o'clock, we'll have coverage, and of course, all all through the weekend, the press conference, the introductory press conference is yep. is scheduled for Saturday at eleven thirty central time and i know we'll we'll be there for that and all the fun that's going to bring so you're going to hang with want to hang with us the entire week i know we get to we get to barclays on wednesday our coverage starts wednesday and we really go all out on thursday so ken's five for those locally and all of it on ken's five.com i'm sure you and Petrini will probably get wrapped into some sort of Facebook digital live. I don't want I don't want to speak for what you guys have on the digital end, but I know how I know how management like yeah. you think. So Yeah, yeah. I'm not too sure about that yet. I think that's still up in the air. Um I just know that I know Ken's slash Spurs will probably be flooded with stuff uh throughout the day. Probably starting on Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday. Probably. Yeah, because Petrini, yeah, Petrini gets out there Wednesday too, so you know, get comfortable. He'd be hanging out him with a solid for a solid third, thirty six to forty eight hours. I don't know if that's well, a good I, or a bad thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it it's just a whirlwind for those of who've never been to NBA draft in Barclays uh, or just New York City. It's not just draft night; it's like a good full two day event that starts mm-hmm. Wednesday in the or like kind of morning ish. By the time they come out, it's like closer to eleven. Yeah. But uh, it's they a whirlwind. The, uh, 
they have the media day essentially you right. know they have the super bowl media day yeah they have the the prospect media day so that's yep. the day before yeah Yep, they have that, and then afterwards the prospects go off and they do their other community events, and you get these buses and shuttles. They'll take you there, back and forth, and then draft day itself. There's no draft day pre stuff, but it's just they're up and running. Like they <laughs> doors open for media like around four o'clock in the afternoon. That's how early it, it, it's going. So mm. knowing the Wimby one, maybe it starts earlier. I would not be surprised. They say doors open at noon or something like that. But um, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we were both there for the Zion. Yep. One, right. Yep. That was the, how's that? How's that turning out right now? <laughs> talk on. Bad. Get get Jake. Get Jake Madison, man. Yeah, I know. I know. They're, You're they're well overdue sh- for an episode with Jake. They're they're in shambles right now. But yeah, we got you covered on the digital side with myself at kensfi.com slash Spurs on the TV side with Casey holding it down the rest of the week, you know, for all the Ken's five TV set has, you know, so tune in. Do not forget to tune in. Ken's five will have you covered in San Antonio at Barclays digital TV. You name it. We got you covered. It's going to be a great, great week right here at Ken's five. But before we let you go, make sure to follow Casey on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. Casey, you need to talk to them about what's coming up. Again, if you just got confused in all this chat, make sure to hit them up. Again, Casey underscore Vieira. And Casey, as always, we thank you for hopping on Locked On Spurs. But don't go anywhere, anybody. Up next, we have MDS, Mark David Smith. He was the number one overall draft pick in the NBA 2K League Draft 2023. He's going to talk about his team, Hawks Talon. And advice he has for Wimbayama, as you know, he MDS was a number one pick. Wimby's going to be a number one pick. What does he have to say from one number one pick to another coming up next right here on Locked On Spurs? But before we let you go, I want to talk to you about Ibotta. Look, watching your closet grow after purchasing all of this season's latest trends. So how about also watching your cash back grow with each purchase with Ibotta? You can earn up to cash back on every shopping trip. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It is that easy. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying out Ibotta by using code LOCKED when you register. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKED. And, of course, I want to talk to you about Mud Slingers drive Through Coffee. If you need to get a power through your day, you want to go to Mud Slingers drive Through Coffee right now. It's in the community, serving the San Antonio community, located at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. And it's open every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Aside from their great uh, products, such as, you know, the Red Bull Infused line, uh, they have uh, lattes, they have regular coffee, they have cold drinks, hot drinks. They got the OG OJ. Yeah, if you want to have your nostalgia vibes uh, plucked again, go pick up an OG OJ. It's like getting that Orange Julius once again. And with Wimbayama about to come to San Antonio in just a few short days, they have the alien drink. It's basically a drink made in honor of Wimby's arrival. It's Red Bull, Kiwi, Red Apple all mixed together and very delicious. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, TikTok at Mudslinger STX. Life is too short for bland coffee. All right, let's go to bring in our next guest. He is Mark David Smith, MDS. He's with Hawks Talents Gaming, team with the NBA 2K League. As everybody knows here on Lockdown Spurs, we bring in every once in a while members, representative from coaches to players right here from the NBA 2K League to chat about what's going on in that league. MDS, he is the number one pick overall for the Hawks Talents Gaming, and he's here to talk about what life has been as the number one pick. Kind of goes hand in hand with another number one pick coming this week for the San Antonio Spurs, and also an in-person game that MDS wants you and everybody listening to check out. It's coming up this Sunday versus the 76ers. We're going to bring him on. He is MDS. Mr. Number One Pick, MDS, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jeff. So why, why don't we just dive into this? Um, you know, a, a lot of the Spurs fans right now, they're getting excited for this week. 
you know, uh, the number one pick. We all know it's probably going to be Wemby, but you are a number one pick for the Hawks Talents Gaming. How has life been for you uh, carrying that label, you know, knowing that you're probably going to get everybody's best game? Tell us about your 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 season so far, being that number one pick. Um, the season is is getting better as we speak. Like we're progressing every game. We started off slow, but now we're just getting better. We beat the Sixers before they started their run, so I think that was a good look for us. Now we're just getting better every day and preparing for the turn. What about you individually? How are you been adjusting to life in the NBA Two K League? It's okay. Um, I'm just getting used to living by myself. Being 18, coming from Chicago, just getting used to being by myself a lot and learning from my teammates. Like, I don't let the number one pick thing get to me because I know that at the end of the day, I'm still a person. I just have to get better and just work to make the Hawks a better organization. When you heard your name picked number one overall by the Hawks, you, you know, you know, now you are here at this point in the season. What do you think has transit has, um, I guess, gotten better in your game from that draft night till now, where have you seen your improvement? Really just listening, taking criticism, and just slowing down the game. Like, I'm usually a running gun player, and when I got in the league, that like that style doesn't work a lot. So me just yeah. being a patient guard and just getting to my spots early and scoring for my team, making the best plays for us to win. You know, coming into the uh, league, you know, again, number one pick, 18-year-old, uh, did you feel like I have to live up to this pressure? You know, how did the Hawks – treat you how did they help you in your development the Hawks is a really good organization right now I'm just I'm trusting the process and we're just getting better over time like I said we got vets that's helping me a lot and in the turn we just we're gonna come out better than how we did in the in the tip-off we did one and four in the tip-off yeah and in the turn we just we just gonna try to get better I can right. I can give you three wins we're gonna get three wins for sure wow three. What, what, why the confidence? Why do you feel so confident going into the turn? We made a switch in our offense, and we run five out now, and we look just so much better. Like, beating the Sixers was a confidence booster for us because, like, yeah. you just seen them win a the tip-off, and that means we have to do some right to beat one of the champions in this league. So, I'm glad you brought that up because, for the most part, you know, it's kind of been a lean season for Hawks Talons, but as you mentioned, there's been a, some – Pickup. You mentioned the win versus the Sixers. You know, had the confidence going into the turn. I think, wh wh why the optimism? Why should Hawk Talents fans be optimistic about this next run, this next phase for Hawks Talent this season? Because it's not how you started, but how you finished last year. The Bucks, for example, they didn't start the season so well, but they went into the turn and got a couple wins, made bracket play, and they just kept that, that energy going forward, and they won the championship. So you just got to just keep getting better over time, building chemistry, and you'll get to where you want to be. We're talking with Mark David Smith. He is MDS with Hawks Talents Gaming of the NBA 2K League. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at 773MDS. Make sure to do that right now. He'll talk to you everything about uh, esports, NBA 2K League, Hawks Talents Gaming. Make sure to follow him on Twitter. Uh, MDS, I, I look at you, I look at your play, you know, solid play so far everything has there been an area of your game that you feel like you know what i really need to improve on this is it one thing is it several things w what has life in the nba 2k league has taught you about you as an individual on and off the court um really off the court i feel like i'm just becoming a better person a better human learning more about my teammates just being more outgoing and on the court i mean i'm not perfect nobody's perfect so it's just i need to get better in every aspect Defense, passing, scoring. Nobody's the nobody's perfect, so I'm just going to try to get better every day when I come in the facility. Did you feel like you were humbled coming into the league? You know, being um, the number one pick. Yeah. Did you feel any like, humility that you had to like swallow and say, you know what, I gotta humble myself? No, nah, not really, because I'm a humble guy. So I really yeah. just just try to stay level headed at all times. You, you know, a lot of the Spurs fans right now are anticipating, you know, the number one pick. You you know this. Uh, this Thursday, you are a number one pick, you know, but you also follow a history of past number one picks, like from, you know, from a Tim Duncan to a number one pick in the NFL, MLB, NHL, you, you know, what is your advice for Spurs fans and the fan that like, like lessons you've learned from Hawks talent fans when they look at 
players drafted number one overall because you've been through it all. You, mm-hmm. you, 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 you know, the pressure, you know, the spotlight. What would be your advice to fans that are looking at number one picks and them expecting them to be all that and more? You just got to trust the process. Like some players come in and they become the best. Some players, it's a process. And depending on the player you might get, it might be a process or the team might be a process. So you just got to trust the process. You know what time that you're getting with number one. So you just got to just trust it. Yeah. At the end of the day, some, something's good going to happen for you. you. You mentioned earlier about veterans on the squad. You know, learn. you said learning from the vets, learning from the vets. Which vets have really been, um, you know, or you have been leaning on on the uh, roster this whole season? My point guard duo sees um, 3v3 this year. I learned a lot from him. And just going into 5v5, he's just being a leader and showing me his ways. He's been with the Hawks for three years. He got drafted here. So he's just showing me what to do for my upcoming years. Have you had, you had some uh, great individual performances uh, throughout your season? Uh, you know, obviously you got some some wins for the Hawks talent as well. Uh, when you look back on the games, are you the type of player that kind of beats themselves up? You're like, oh, if I'd done this, if I had done that. Or do you kind of like have to just move on? next game up you know and forget about the rest yeah i try to i try to keep a small like memory because you can't dwell in the past once it's happened it happens it's over you gotta move on to the next play and that's something i try to like i try to keep in a room mm-hmm. in our circle just move on to the next play because we live in the past we gonna forget about the future yeah um what have been some of your favorite moments so far this season um definitely the sixers win because going into that like the Sixers are, uh, like, they kind of run the league in tip-offs. They made five finals out of the six years. So going into that that game and, like, going to get some of our friends, like Dre, and yeah. beating them was a good moment because I played with Dre all my life until I got into the league. So beating them was a good moment for us. And getting my first win, that was really the best moment for me. Yeah, I, I think a lot of um, the people who don't follow the 2K League, uh, you know, like I do, don't realize that a lot of you you guys – I played with each other, with each other, like on the pro am level, and then y'all are separated out. And, it, and that's what I try to stress to people who who look at me like, "Why are you covering the two K league?" I go, "No, it's the exact same thing." You know, pro am league is kind of like the college. You know, a lot of these college players they play together, and then they get drafted as the professional, and they get broken up, and they have to play against each other. It's the same concept. You know, what what would be your message to uh, esports fans, NBA 2K League fans that are, you know, or just just those that are interested in NBA 2K League wanting to learn more about the game, about Hawks talent and much more? Um, Just really tune into the streams Tuesday through Fridays, NBA 2K League on Twitch. And there's a lot of personalities to watch and a lot of great teams to see. And you might become a fan of some of these players, even if you play the game. It's, it's very entertaining when people yeah. play on stage and how they talk to each other. It, you feel the energy for sure. We're talking with, again, Mark David Smith. He is with Hawks Talents Gaming. He is MDS. He is the Hawks' number one pick overall this season. Follow him on Twitter at 773MDS. And uh, we're here talking about all things Hawks Talents, the NBA 2K League. And speaking of Hawks Talents, uh, let's get into some big news. This uh, weekend, you guys are going to be hosting, uh, I believe, a um, in-person game Sunday. Is that correct? Yeah, versus Sixers. Yeah, yeah. Tell us more about that. Uh, what's going on? Um, we preparing, we're preparing for that right now. Like I said, they just won the tip off, and we beat them before they started their run. So um, I'm feeling good about this game. We just got to keep getting better. They're very hot right now. Like I said, they won the tip off. So hopefully we catch them and we beat them, and they have an off day, but we we're coming into this game ready to beat them. It sounds it, it sounds to me like you're itching for this game already. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Because these are these are like my close friends. So playing them in person is just so much better. I can talk smack to them, and we can we can we can go at it. That's what I think. Dre is a very good point guard in this league, so I think this would be a very good game for us. Now, now you said right now in person. Is this um, like? In Atlanta or is this yeah, in Philly? Atlanta. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Tell, tell us. Oh, so, be, so tell the Atlanta uh, people, you know, that are residents of Atlanta, how you know where they can go, or what, what if if you can, you know, where they can get, go and uh, get a seat and watch all the action. If you have that information, yeah, um, you can just follow us on Instagram or Twitter, Hawks Talent GC, and information will be coming out soon. 
I'm looking forward to it. I know it's going to probably be streamed, correct? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, let me tell everybody right now, if you've never seen an NBA 2K League game, well, you're going to get yourself a treat, you know, because MDS has been alluding to it. There's a lot of smack talk, and it's out of control. Like, yeah, for sure. have you – I mean – I mean, you just look at the the last tournament. I mean, the, there is some times I was like, "Oh my god!" I go, "Here we go! Fireworks about to happen!" Mm-hmm. And uh, but uh, like, fortunately, cooler heads prevailed. But that's what the thing about the league is: is Hawks Talents Gaming is that it's a very exciting sport. It's esports. Esports is up and coming. I I would argue MDS. You disagree with me if you want that. I think esports is not up and coming. It's here already. What do you think? I agree. Like Call of Duty's taking off. Next is the two K League. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's 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 an exciting time right now to watch Hawks talent and watch MDS do his thing. I, you know, speaking of doing your thing, MDS, are you gonna be putting on a show for everybody for the in person game? Yes, sir. I'm just um, I'm gonna do my best to win. I'm gonna do what it takes. If it takes for me to score a lot of points or pass the ball a lot, whatever it takes for me to win, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I want you to brag a little bit. What's been your favorite game that you've had put on individually? Um, probably the Sixers. That was my my Man, you team. love playing against those Sixers, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, probably the Sixers. Uh, what what you do in that game? Um, I controlled the game a lot for the most part. Like I had thirty points, but besides that, it was just me controlling the game, slowing it down. When it got to crucial points in the fourth quarter, we kind of let the game slip away a little bit. But in the room, I just kept everybody level headed because we was. We was happy we was up with a couple seconds left, but then it started to slip away. But I got us back on track, and we closed out the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I remember tuning in for that game. I think it was on the Twitch side of things. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, my God, he's going off. I, I don't see anybody slowing him down right now. And sure enough, you did put on a show. Hopefully, we'll get that performance or just a good team win because you guys yeah. definitely need that, you know, that, that push heading into this final tournament here. And and speaking of the final leg of the season, uh, what what are you expecting from this team? Uh, what what are some more optimistic things that we could be looking forward to uh, from Hawks talents? Um, we're just getting better, so we're just coming out to perform better than how we did in the tip off. So if that takes us, just we just got honestly, I think it's just us winning games. Once we start yeah. winning, the momentum will push, yeah. and we're gonna start our run that everybody's been looking for. MDS, is it? I mean, is it safe for me to say that if it just feels like? Like you guys are right there. Like you just get those str- a couple wins that could really be the difference because on paper this team is loaded. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like our first group, we had a very tough group. Gen G, they made it to the conference finals. Sixers, a very good Nets team in NBL that that was five and one going into um, bracket play. So I feel like in this group we should take off. We know what we have to do. We learned ourselves from the first tournament. Now we're just going to adjust for the next tournament and start our run that everybody's been looking for. He is Mark David Smith. Follow him on Twitter at 773MDS. He is with Hawks Talons uh, Gaming, part of the NBA 2K League, the number one pick. Does that, does that sound weird? Does that still sound weird to you when I say number one pick? Nah, I'm nah. used to it. Yeah, look at you. You, you can pop your collar a little bit. You, you, <laughs> you go ahead. Go ahead. You're allowed here on Lockdown Spurs. Once again, everybody. This Sunday, uh, June 25th on the Twitch. I, I'm assuming that's like a Hawks Talents Twitch or not the NBA 2K League Twitch. Yeah, the Hawks Talents Twitch. Yeah, okay. On the Hawks Talents Twitch page, you want to go there again this Sunday. Hawks Talents versus 76ers GC. 76ers GC just won the tip off. Um, they're good. And, and as you probably heard right now, MDS is itching to play against them. So no pressure, MDS, right? No pressure. No, no pressure. pressure. No pressure at all. Uh, make sure to follow Hawks Talents Gaming on Twitter as well. And also the NBA 2K League uh, dot com or Twitter. I mean, you guys are everywhere, aren't you, on MDS? Yep. TikTok everywhere. Find us. And all the same name, right? Hawks Talent. And that's yep. Hawks Talent. GC. GC, 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 yeah. So there's no excuse for you all to not check out some Hawks Talents Gaming action. Again, this Sunday in person. If you're in Atlanta, go to there where they're going to have it. If you're online, watch it everywhere you can. MDS, uh, I'd like to end this by asking you, you have any final thoughts you want to say to the fan base, uh, Hawks Talents Gaming, as you guys are going to start this last segment? Um, One thing I will say is, like I said earlier, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And I think we're going to have a great finish to this season. Yeah, absolutely. All right, he is MDS. 
again with Hawks Talents Gaming.